Well, this is a story from my life. It's called the Peace Vigil. This particular morning, I was standing on the corner of uh, Market and Main Street. It was a nice day, not too hot or cold. I could see the uh, pizzeria across the street and the bank with the raised columns. The convenience store where people gather to get lottery tickets. It was a Saturday morning, so people were doing errands. You know, they had, well, to me, they didn't really walk like I would think of Saturday morning. But anyway, when I first came to Socrates, I tended to almost walk up people's ankles on Main Street because they didn't seem to just move along. But this was a Saturday morning. Now, you learn something after you've been on a vigil line after a while. People who walk by you on the sidewalk, there's no animosity, but they don't look at you. It's as if you might be contagious. They just keep walking. Now, however, the people who go by in cars, there's something different about being in a car. They're sort of encapsulated. So, once or twice in the morning, you get somebody going by, turning around, and issuing a profanity, usually a young man. And he then takes off as if you might actually come after him. <laughs> People, on the other hand, also go by, and they honk their horn. And they lean forward like eager school kids. They want to say, we're on your side. And then they keep on going. I had... Uh, I had lived in Socrates about four years by this time. I, I had learned things you need to know. People say St. Mary's, it can mean the church or the school. If they say the auxiliary, it means the American Legion. A, a new friend came into my house, looked around and said, it's cute. That meant small. I, I knew it wasn't the time to begin discussing co-housing where I live, where people believe in smaller spaces to live light on the earth and move functions into the common house. I didn't go there. But this morning, this morning, you move around, you see this, the, someone else has put up the banners. It says, "Bring support our troops, bring them home. <gasps> yeah. Oh, when we first went into Iraq, I wanted to yell. I just wanted to look at Washington and say, how about bribery? You want to bring Hussein down, put a school in every Iraqi town, but you know, nobody was listening. But this morning, this average Saturday morning, I saw a young man over in front of the bank looking at me. He, he, he had on work boots, those bright tan brown boots with the thick whitish soles. And he moved with a confident motion of an athlete. His brown hair was falling over his forehead and I thought, here comes trouble. He came across the street and came up and he said, um, you got family over there? And I said, no. Do you? And his face changed and he said, my brother, and I'm scared to death. talked for a little bit. He told me his name was Jim. And he said, I, 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 I was wondering about the, it was as if he had a hard time with the word, I was wondering about the motivation. 
And I said, well, I, I'm old. I've seen a lot of wars. And that kid, he looked at me and he said, they don't do any good, do they? <laughs> what else was there to say? <coughs> and just then, <coughs> of course, white pickup comes around. He comes, uh, had a green light. He squeals his wheels around and he gives me the finger. And I thought, oh, don't worry about it, Jim. And then I got it. He probably knew that young man. It was easy for me. But this was his town. Support our troops meant something different. I said, I, I can honestly pray for your brother, but I don't support the war. And he's looking at me and he's nodding. And I said, Jim, we, we have to talk to people. Oh, not those people, but we got to talk to people. And his eyes went down. It was as if I could hear what was going on in his head. He said, yeah, he said, yeah, talk to people, huh? And my father would hit me up the side of the head, bring the troops home. But we shared something. He walked away, and I said, uh, we're here every Saturday morning, 10.30. I never saw him again.